Father, today I ask that you help us to make that conversion. Praise and worship can seem difficult at times. We're burdened and other worries and thoughts are on our mind and we should not let that happen. But if we can just remember that the breath you have given us is the source of the praise and worship we should give you. Just every breath can turn around and be made praise and worship to you. Thank you for that truth today. I'm praying for, Lord, your sons and daughters in the body of Christ and in this house as well, that, Lord, you grant them the spirit of courage and confidence and overcoming and triumph, that, Lord, whatever they are facing, Jesus already faced. Whatever they are fighting, Jesus already fought and won. And so, Lord, we, we need to upgrade our faith. We need to tune up to our faith. And I'm thanking you for that in this place, in the glorious name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for uh, this great state. We have elections on Tuesday, a primary. We pray for our great country under attack from in and from without. I pray for, Lord, just the work of the church that's taking place across this globe to carry the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel, the truth that Jesus is love, that Jesus saves, he heals, he delivers, he casts out devils, he does it all. And thank you for that truth in the glorious name of Jesus today. Now let this word that comes forth today make a difference in our hearts and in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for what will take place and that by the time we're leaving, we will know that we have heard from you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I want you to get over to Matthew chapter 9. I want to let the Lord speak to you today. It's a cold word. Uh, this ministry always has been uh, signified by cold words. We're good with, with uh, cold words. We know what this means. Anybody remember this one? <laughs> right? You remember this one? Live, living on top, top of Jesus. And uh, this year... We've made much mileage out of right on King Jesus. That, that, that's a phrase. We know Jesus is getting busy with something. And uh, I think last Sunday, we got next. All right, next, I got next. We're next. So that'll be one. But today, today I have another one that I believe will stay with you for a long, long, long time. I want to teach you this word. It is a word that activates the supernatural, that activates the manifestation of God in your life. Uh, it is a way for you to hook up with heaven instantly and cause heaven to come to earth on your behalf and in your life. So we're going to begin reading in Matthew 9, verse 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Now, I want to bring pieces of this story. And when you spend time with these scriptures, you begin to see that sometimes like you're there and you're watching it happen. They're blind men, but they follow them. They, 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 they must have been using their, their hearing. It said they were blind, but they followed him. They must have been listening. They must have been hearing. And we know faith comes by hearing. Is that true? Verse 28, and when he was come into the house, the, the blind man follow, followed him there. Oh, my goodness. They followed him into the house. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. And so today I want to give you this word 
is now the different versions of it. The word is yes, yay, yeah. Any any combination of that level of agreement, because then Jesus touched their eyes and said, "According to your faith, be it yeah, be it unto you." In other words, Jesus said, "Become what you believe." Oh, my goodness. And so I'm saying to you today, you can be seated. Whatever it is that's out in front of you that you seemingly can't control, it's out of your hands. Are you able to believe that God, that Jesus is able to do this for you? It could be uh, in your health, it could be in your finances, it could be in your family, it could be in your employment, but I need you to know whatever it is, it's not too hard, it is not too difficult, the answer is not too far away. In fact, it's on you in such a way that it's about to manifest. The word yes, I, I'll use yes, but you could use yay, you could use yeah. I like yep, yep. These are all going to come, you're going to carry these in your pocket so that as you're going through your day and your week and you're like, man, the Lord is manifesting, the Lord is moving in my life. Yep, mm-hmm, yep, yeah, yeah, yo, oh yeah, yeah, there he is. Hallelujah. If I was a cowboy fan, I would say, yeah, here we go. Because we understand the kingdom of God is not asleep right now. The kingdom of God is fully awake. And I want you to know the manifestation of God is knocking at your door. Knocking, knocking. Will you answer the door and let it in? Now, yes uh, is also an acronym. You expect the supernatural. You expecting the supernatural. When you say yes, that means you expect the supernatural. Yes, I believe. Yes, I receive. Yep, I'm all in. It's mine. I have it now. It's done. All of those words are, are, are important to you. Yes is a supernatural word. What if they said no in this verse? What if they said, no, I, I, your, your will be done? Isn't it something also? Let, 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 allow me to bring this out. Two blind men in the street, they must be hearing that Jesus is coming by. They follow that voice. Faith comes by hearing. They follow him into the house. Blind, but they follow him in the house. They get into the house. Jesus recognizes them, doesn't ask them anything else except, do you believe I'm able to do this? How did he know what they wanted? And when he didn't say, do you believe I can give you your sight? He just said, do you believe I'm able to do this? They knew what he was asking. I believe there's a way when you walk with Jesus that you and him end up on the front, same wavelength, on the same frequency. And he already knows what you need. You already know what he's bringing. All you need to do is say yes. Yeah, yep. You think you might remember this cold word for a little while? So it's like if I was in the military or if I was in uh, law enforcement, 10-4. Do you believe I'm able to do this in your, in your body? Yes, 10-4. Do you believe I'm able to do this in your bank account? Roger that. Oh, come on, man. The Lord is asking you, your, your answer is, Roger, yeah, let's do, let's do it. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. We would say, you're doggone skippy. Do you believe I'm able to do this in your life? You're doggone skippy. I see the anointing and the manifestation of God running roughshod over the challenges and opposition in your life. The opposition came to stop you, but it's just an invitation to say yes. Yeah, I believe that. 
So I need you to bring this idea of what I'm sharing with you into the concept of your health and your healing and your increase and your wealth. Now, I, I want to say this because I want to make it very, very clear. Knowing the demonic opposition and resistance to what God has provided for you, where your health and where your wealth is concerned. And notice the words are spelled similar. Notice also the principles for one double as the principles for the other. Notice that both are used by the enemy to accuse God of incompetence and impotence. No, no, God, God can't do it. But I'm telling you right now, God can do it. There's a woman in this church had the tip of her ring finger snipped off. And then she showed me her hand. Her, her, all ten fingers look the same. The Lord grew back a finger. Oh, 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 oh he, he can do it. Nothing is impossible. Number one, the broken and sinful atmosphere in the earth realm because of sin. People ask me all the time or often, why do bad things happen to good people? How can that happen? Why? Why, why is that? I want you to understand the reason is evil is in the earth. When, when Lucifer, how can I say this? When Lucifer fell after rebelling against God, that evil it corrupted the earth's atmosphere and the earth became a broken and a fallen place. You don't believe it? Just look and see what's going on day by day out here. It's evil. That's not God. Why would God allow that? That's not God. It's evil. It's the existence of evil. But that's not the only problem we have. Also, also, number two, Satan himself still is in the earth opposing you. You think it's the black man. You think it's the white man. You think, you, you think it's the illegal immigrants. No, I'm telling you who's against you is the devil. That's your adversary. And then number three, there are human beings. Let me look real good at a camera. Which one am I on? Let, th there are human beings who are invested in you being sick and you being broke. But I'm here to disappoint them today that there is a gospel following a man named Jesus who said the anointing of God was on him and the purpose of that anointing was to give sight to the blind, to tell good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, and to set at liberty to them those that are bruised. The power of the gospel is that no matter what state you are in, you don't have to stay there. The blood of Jesus can save us from the gutter to the utter. you to get this. I come to this pulpit today, I want to apologize to absolutely nobody for the good news that I'm sharing about what Jesus can do in your life. No apologies. Go to the helicopter. I'm not apologizing. I'm standing on what the Word of God says. These two blind men, they came. All of a sudden, the only question that mattered, not are you black, not are you white, not are you a Republican or a Democrat, not are you educated or uneducated, not anything other than are you able to believe I am able to do this. 
And I raise that interrogative, I bring that query to you today about what you are facing and what you're dealing with. Is, is your belief system that Jesus is able to do this? Because if so, it's time for you to get ready. The rest of 2024 is going to be some kind of ride for you. Is he able? Is he able? Is he able to replace your cells? Yes. Is he able to repair every organ, kidney, liver, pancreas, heart? Is he able? Yes. Oh, yeah, he's able. I'm tired of preachers and politicians also, if I need to, telling me God can't do this, God won't do that. Well, that's not what the Bible says. All right, Mr. Theologian, what does it say? Tell me what it does say he can do. It does say he can do anything but fail. Mark chapter 5, verse 26, 25 through 28, the woman there with the issue of blood heard that Jesus was coming. And she said to herself, if I can touch only his garment, I'm going to receive what I need. She didn't even ask him for permission. She just grabbed that anointing that was present. We're sitting here waiting, Jesus, will you heal me? He's like, I I'm able to do it. Are you able to receive it? There is no if with me. Psalm 105 verse 37 says, The children of Israel, when God brought them out of captivity, out of bondage, out of slavery, he brought them out and not one was sick, and not one was broke. He brought them out with silver and gold. He brought them out with silver and gold, and not one of them was feeble. God said, I'm going to give every single one of you a tune-up. I'm not bringing you out. And they, God brought them out. They broke. They ain't got nothing. He said, no, that is not my MO. I'm bringing you out with substance, and I'm bringing you out well. People talking about the church going through the great tribulation and suffering and struggling like everybody else. You don't have what the Scripture says about the church. The church is the kingdom. The kingdom and the church are never underneath. They're always on top. Okay. All right. There's a voice of healing and increase. That voice is so you can make a choice. So you can't just ride into it. You have to make a, 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 an anointed decision yes. that my life is following the blueprint yes. of the Lord. Yes. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 24 says that the Word of God is what brings the, the understanding of what His purpose is in our lives to us. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17 and 18 talks about how it is his will to bring us wealth. Deuteronomy 8, 17, but forget this not, children. Verse 18, for it is the Lord thy God that giveth thee the ability to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. That means his covenant cannot be established through people who are not operating in covenant ability. That means my financial inability could be the thing holding back my neighbor getting born again and saved. Think about it. We want people to get up and come to church with us. And they look at our lives, and their lives are better. They need to see something that they don't have that we have that makes them say, wait a minute, now I got this, I got that, I got that. But you have all those and you have something else. How'd you say that again? I, 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 I'm trying to get picked that word up.
Proverbs 4, 20 through 24 says, your health shall spring up. It says that the words of God are health to all of our flesh. The Lord wants you well physically in body. He wants you well financially in the bank. Okay, all right, all right. I, I'll stop. I, I mean, I, 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 you want me to talk about uh, going to heaven on flowery beds of ease and, oh, what a rough world. I'm coming up the rough side of the mountain. I, my ancestors came up the rough side. I ain't going up no more rough side. I, I, I'm walking in my high places. I'm trying to release it on you. And one of these days, if I was a Baptist, oh, I said one of these old days, but one of these days, the truth of the gospel, the truth of what Jesus accomplished on the cross by taking away our sin, you will finally realize because he did that, I'm standing in the face of God. God didn't have to turn his face from me because he sees me. He can't see my sin. He sees the righteousness of Christ by faith. I guess some of you have never sinned, so you can't celebrate too much. But I have fallen. I have failed. I have, I have messed up. And so the blood of Jesus means something to me. I was dirty, but I'm clean. I was filthy, but now I'm faithful. I was out of the game, now I'm back in the game. Being born again is like being in a basketball game and you foul out, but then the, the, the official says you can go back in, though. You foul out, but keep playing. And the devil's complaining. He's like, they can't keep, they, they, he fouled out. And the ref, referee, but the referee is named Jesus. The righteous judge, he said, I find no fault. I might have fouled out, but I'm in the game. Tell somebody, I may have fouled out, but I'm back in the game. Pass me the freaking ball. I'm ready to, I'm ready to go to work, man. I'm ready. Let's go. Come on. You see that seat right there? That's where the devil snapped his ankle. All right, be seated. Let me finish. Let me finish. Never say no to Jesus. Your answer should always be yes. When Jesus gave his life, he didn't say no. He gave his best. Your answer should be yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yay, Lord. Yeah. From the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely Yes. I ain't holding nothing back. My soul, my mind, my feelings, my emotions, they all belong to you. Let me go ahead and bring this to a close. What Jesus is for, I support. And I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a, a trouble warning right now. I'm about to, I'm about to tread on some, uh, in some, some deep water, but I got to go there. What Jesus is against, I oppose. I'm not a principal at a school. I'm not a teacher at a school. I'm a, I'm a preacher of the gospel. I stand by what Jesus stands by. I heard a man a, a week ago on my television set tell me that his platform, what he is standing on, what he is running on, as President of the United States, here is my platform. Number one, Ukraine. Number two, double state, two state solution for Israel. Number three, abortion. This is his program. Let me break it down for you like a fraction. Number one, Ukraine. We are not supporting Ukraine with another penny. Ukraine is one of the most highly prolific persecutors of Christians. Read it for yourself. What has happened to the Ukrainian church? What has happened to Christians in Ukraine? Right. 
We keep sending money over there. And our own people, our own veterans are struggling in this country. Scru hammer those people over there. Let them deal with their problem. We got to handle our own. But Ukraine persecutes Christians. But you don't care about that. That doesn't bother you. But I'm telling you, it bothers Jesus. And so if he is opposed to it, I am going to be opposed to it. What about the two-state solution? It's impossible to have a two-state solution in Israel. Israel is willing to have peace, but their enemies, Hamas, Hezbollah, they, none of them want peace. They want to destroy Israel. They have it in their charter to destroy Israel. No such thing as a two-state solution, although they will try it. Israel will probably go along with it. But have you read your Bible? Don't you know that's the whole setup? My God, for the end of the tribulation period, in the beginning of the battle of Armageddon, don't you understand Israel makes a covenant with its arch enemy? And when they get three and a half years into that contract, into that covenant, they, they, they break it. I don't know what they're going to do. They probably bring some kind of pig up into the, the temple, into the, <laughs> up to the altar of God. They, when them Jews see that pig, they're going to revolt against that right away. Let me tell you, I had to repent because last week I talked about the rapture and I talked about how we rising up <laughs> when we're caught up to meet him in the air. I just feel like talking trash. You know I'm from Brooklyn. I just like to talk trash, especially when you've been opposing and talking trash back all the time. Now I'm rising. I, I want to say something. And the Lord says, you cannot have that attitude. Somebody said, you're not right. No, I just got a little Peter in me. All of us have a little Apostle Peter, a little rock on the inside of us. It's like, let me talk some trash. I think very fondly about the times that are to come, that how you and I have to rise up and live victoriously before the sinners and the heathen. That when the rapture takes place, it's not rescuing us, it's rewarding us. When we get pulled out of here, it's not to keep us from being devoured. We, we dominate when we leave. Like the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, they didn't leave out as, as paupers, they went out as bosses. Hallelujah. And uh, speaking of talking trash, after, you know the prophetic clock, so the next thing is the rapture of the church. There we go, we gone. Church gone. The world descends into complete tribulation and dystopian chaos. While we are at the marriage supper of the Lamb, hallelujah, hallelujah. glory to God, the marriage supper of the Lamb and the judgment seat of Christ. And uh, while that's going on, as I said, there'll be a 70-year agreement between Israel and, uh, uh, and the heathen and the, the Antichrist. And halfway through that seven-year period, that's three and a half years for those of you from Columbus Public Schools, uh, <laughs> you have your pronouns, you just don't have the fractions down, but I'm here to help you. Was that a bridge too far? <laughs> and uh, three and a half years through, they will revolt against uh, the Antichrist, and it will uh, descend and plunge the world into what we know as uh, World War III. And that's why you got to be aware of the things you're seeing going on. It's all, all swirling around that same subject. And at the end of those seven years, the end of that, the second half, three and a half years, or the total seven, the Bible says as Israel is in, locked in battle, opposed by everybody, but there is a crack 
in the eastern sky. And as the sky opens up like a curtain, a foot is seen stretching through that cloud. And the Bible says there is so much power when his foot hits Mount Orb or Mount Ararat, wherever it is, the mountain will split in two. My God. There's no Apache helicopter. There's no Black Hawk. There is no Aegis missile. There's nothing that can deal with what's coming. Because he'll show up just by the brightness of his coming. He don't have to swing one fist. All he's got to do is be there. And the enemies of God will be soundly defeated. Israel will be vindicated. The church will come and rule with Israel. I'm, I've, I, I got to close, but I got to tell you this. So the scripture says, I know I'm, uh, I'm kind of off where I was, but I, 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 got, I got so full of it. The scripture says after the battle of Armageddon is a period of time called the millennial reign. 1,000 years of Jesus. 1,000 years. Every knee shall bow and every tongue has to confess that Jesus is Lord. Heathen will have to pronounce it. Sinners will have to pronounce it. Zelensky will have to pronounce it. The Ukrainians will have to pronounce it. Planned Parenthood will have to pronounce it. Everybody will agree, Jesus. I've studied it out. The Lord took me and showed me some of it. In the millennial reign, you literally have this world. See, it's not the perfect age. That's at the end. That's going on ages without end. In the millennial reign, it is the world as we see it now, just without sin. People will go to work. People will be buying and selling, carrying on just like we are now, just without sin, without COVID, without corrupt elections. Oh, you ain't saying nothing. And it's all about Jesus. When you go into the voting booth, every candidate of every position is just Jesus. When you go to the football game, a hundred yards, in this end zone it says Jesus, in that end zone it says Christ. On the scoreboard, one entry is Son of Man, the other is Son of God. Everything is about Jesus. You ain't saying nothing. Hello. When you go to Polaris, the store is not apostle, it's apostle. It's not time to heal figures, he'll figure it out. It's not JC Penny, it's JC Prophet. Jesus Christ the Prophet, you ain't saying nothing. Girl, where did you get where did you get that outfit? Oh, I, I got not from Sears, from Sears. <laughs> Milton Brunson used to say, "You better come inside. It's about to rain fire. It's about to rain. It, it, it now is the time to say yes, Lord." I'm with you, Jesus. I'm all in. I feel that heat. I feel, I feel, I, yeah, I'm, I, I, I want that smoke. I want what you're bringing. I'm on your side. All right. Let me see if I can finish. Let me just deal with this scourge of, emo, of uh, abortion, and then, I, then I'll be finished. I'll give you some points. Abortion is literally the modern-day expression of the ancient worship of Molech. Yeah. Molech is a false god who demanded sacrifice, sacrifice of one's own children. And there's not been any period of civilization where uh, uh, 
uh, child sacrifice has not existed. The Aztecs, the Mayans, Africa, Asia. We're more sophisticated, and so our form is a little more sophisticated. Sophisticated. The uh, vice president bragged last week that she was the first sitting vice president to visit an abortion clinic. We had a president that was the first sitting president to go to the March for Life, but we didn't want him. We, 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 we want a vice president that visits and champion, not just visits, champions. Child sacrifice. And abortion is not in trouble in this country. They want you to believe that, to steal your vote, to get your vote. But I'm telling you right now, there are more abortions now than before. And 87% of abortions are not at the abortion clinic. It's at home. Home because they, who in the world uses millions of dollars to figure out a pill that can kill a baby. Who, what, what is wrong, where's the camera? What is wrong with you? And the untold burden of guilt that that brings on a woman to perform, now she is the abortion provider. And her bathroom at home where she lives is the abortion clinic. And they want her to take a pill at home. And she will miscarry and lose that child at home. And then when she sees it, she will know what she has done. Women have struggled. They've put that corpse of that baby in a shoebox. Some have put it in a freezer. They don't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to do. Then they have to live in that place. Go in that bathroom. Where's Planned Parenthood now? Where's the help? Where's the ministry? I'm going to tell you where it is. It's at the Church of Jesus Christ. Because, Because I love you no matter what. I love you before an abortion. I love you during an abortion. If you had one, I love you after the abortion. Because Jesus is able to heal your heart. You need to call that hotline. You're a young woman or a young man, and you're tempted to have that abortion. You already took that pill, but there's a pill that undoes the pill. There's a pill that reverses the abortion pill. And they probably, doofuses as they are, will come up with a pill that undoes the pill that undoes the pill. But then Jesus will release some wisdom and have another pill that releases and reverses the pill that reverses the pill that reverses the pill. They'll come up with enough. We can play this all day. Jesus is going to win. Every single one of those babies is in heaven right now. So mama, you had an abortion. Dad, you had an abortion. I'm I'm asking you to receive the forgiveness of the Lord. Forget forgiving yourself. Just let Jesus forgive you. Let Jesus forgive you. You want to see your baby. In heaven, the angels are caring for your baby. Waiting for you to get there to name him. Waiting for you to get there to hold her. You can't get this kind of truth at the Planned Parenthood clinic. Because they ain't got no anointing. The anointing is in the house of God. We love you. I love you. I just need to put that out there because there's abortion. I, what party just runs on abortion? I mean, that, that's like your whole point. I know I got three people clapping. It's all good. I, I'm not moved. This, <laughs> I'm serving Jesus. And he's not running for office. So you can't vote against him. You can't cast him out. You can't impeach him. And he's not stepping down. All right, let me finish this, then, then, then we'll, be, we'll, we'll be done for the day. I want you to write, write, write some things down real quick. 
Oh, man, it's 11.05. All right. Things to say yes to. Number one, the cross of Christ and the blood of Jesus. The only thing that ever could have kept you from receiving from God is the sin we've committed. God did something about that at the cross of Christ and with the blood of Jesus. Number two, stay close to the church. The greatest trick of COVID is that you just don't need to be in church. You, just, you can just watch online. You're missing something when you're online. Now, I know I have people watching online now, but it's not the same. The scripture didn't say forsake not uh, watching the program on TV. It said forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. There's something happens when we are together and we serve. We're, uh, we're ushers together. We're greeters together. We serve together. We, we work in God's hand together. Something happens when we work together. Amen. So the church is important. The kingdom of God. Number three, the kingdom. You're, you're a member of the body of Christ, but you're a citizen of God's kingdom. I need you to grasp and understand that simply because the church and the kingdom is a two-factor authentication. So you can't just say, well, I'm, I, I'm in the church and uh, I, I, I don't have any kingdom privileges. You have to understand the church is representing the kingdom. Yeah. More, most likely what happens is people believe in the kingdom, but they just don't, I just don't believe in organized religion. Do you believe in an organized car? <laughs> don't you have to have a starter and a fuel injector? Do you just have parts and you just get out there and, and, and sit on a pile of parts and it goes somewhere? No, a car is very organized. The kingdom of God and the body of Christ are organized. Yes, yes, it's organized. So it's not chaos. Well, I just have church hurt. No, no, no. You have hurt feelings. The church did not hurt you. The church is Christ's body. People may have hurt you, but not the church. So just strike that phrase, church hurt, strike it out of your vocabulary. The church is where the glory of God is. But the devil calls it church hurt to keep us from getting involved, keep us from really submitting. I, you ain't saying nothing. Number four, say yes to health and healing. I'm eating right. I'm taking care of my body. Then look, I guess there's nothing wrong with a Dung King's munchkin skewer, but you can't have that for breakfast every morning. I mean, if you push and you just have to get a sausage and egg biscuit at, at, at McDonald's, if, if, if that's what you have to do, but you can't do that every morning. There's a natural side and a supernatural side to the supernatural health that you're going to receive. So we have to, it, do you walk at all? I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about from your bedroom to the bathroom. That doesn't count. <laughs> I'm assuming you didn't crawl. I'm assuming you walked there. Somebody said, well, Pastor, I got up. I got up uh, every other morning. I get up every other morning and, and walk around the block three times. And then when I'm finished, I kick the block back underneath the bed, and then, and then I get back in bed. That's not the block I'm talking about. And then number five, say yes to increase in wealth. Now, I'm going to say this one more time, then I'm going to be finished. You have to understand, I don't know what kind of people these are that benefit from other human suffering. I don't know what, what, what kind of human benefits when other Christians, when other people suffer. But there are people committed. Don't worry, I'll just knock it down again. There are people committed. Usually it's Will. If it was Will, I would knock it right back down. These people are committed to poison being in our food, poison being in our drugs and prescriptions. They're committed to depopulating the earth. God said, no, you want more people. These people want less people. I'm going, I promise I'll stop right here, but I need to say this. The poison religion 
of DEI, diversity, inclusion, and equity and inclusion. The purpose is to divide us. The purpose is to cause us to distrust one another on purpose. When I get on a plane and I see a black pilot, I don't want to I don't want to have to figure in my mind, can they really fly or are they just black? When I go to the doctor's office for a checkup and the, the nurse's assistant or the physician's assistant is black, I don't want to like, well, do they really know what they're doing? I want to assume, I just want to believe like I always did, this person is qualified. But now I know your goal, well, we want half the pilots to be black. Now I got a question. See, this whole thing of factions, black, white, that we almost were over it, but somebody benefited. You remember Roscoe Jenkins? You remember at the, at the end, he finally had got over the hump. They're like, oh, okay, we all going to get along. They had to stir it up one more time. I said last week, I was talking about, uh, I think I said Hunger Games. Hunger Games, that's the wrong, that was Effie Trinket, all right? D- uh, Divergent, the different factions, erudite, abnegation. Ari, what are they? Candor. All these different factions. And these elites up here in these high castles, they just run in everything. And their power is to keep everybody in a separate faction. If the factions ever got together, they'd run them turkeys out of town. But we can't run them out of town because I'm I'm too bitter at white folk. And white folk are too ashamed of where they came from. Shame and bitterness, anger and guilt are the language of the enemy. Never allow anybody to tell you that the color of your skin is evil. It was wrong when they said that about black folk. 75 years ago, and it's wrong today when you say it about white folk. 11 claps. I don't care. Oh, don't clap now. It's too late. No, no, no. I don't want it. I don't even want it. It's goodwill clapping. No, I don't even want that. Pick a plot line. Either you're with Jesus or you're not. Either you're with the Word or you're not. Either you're with God or you're not. Make up your mind. Choose ye this day who you will serve. But as for me and my freaking house, we're going to worship and praise the Lord. Give God thanksgiving. Hallelujah. All right. You like that? Pick a plot line. can't be both. You have to be one or the other. You can't. I like the Buckeyes and I like the Wolverines. That's not, this is not possible. This is, this is not possible. I like the Cowboys and I like the Redskins. Or no one likes the Eagles except, except Don and Benita. Fly, Eagles, fly. Yeah. Ugh. Cry, Eagles, cry. Actually, the whole NFC East is a mess right now. But now is the time to stand up and be counted for the Lord. And I don't mean standing up physically. I mean standing up with your soul, with your mind and your emotions, your feelings, and your passion. I am passionate about Jesus. I am passionate about what he can do to change a person's life because he changed mine. Can I, can I wax Baptist for one more moment? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But, that's a big but. That's a big old but. The master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters 
lifted me. Now, safe am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love, his name is Jesus, lifted me. And I want him to lift you too. Let's pray. Father, thank you today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for being here in this place, for speaking to our hearts. Thank you for these two blind men who showed us uh, all it takes is one. We don't have to have any other answers except one. Yes. Yes, Jesus, to your will and to your way. Yes, there are things we are facing tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday. We have no control over, but you have control. We put it into your hands. 